Thank you, sir. Sir. So, uh, from the perspective of clinical pharmacology, I shall try to dissect this topic that is newer therapy of Parkinson's disease. So, first of all, we know the journey of Parkinsonism. So, rather, the evidence based journey was probably started from this 1817 from this uh, book written by James Parkinson, who had beautifully described the clinical features of Parkinson's disease. And we can see here not only the motor symptoms, also the non motor symptoms were described by Dr. James Parkinson. But it took more than 150 years that we got some treatment. <clears throat> so this is the first time in NEGM it was published about levodopa. And we hope that something more is coming. But before going through the treatment available, what we learned from our physiology days that everything about Parkinson's disease is based on only that dopaminergic pathway. So here we can see in this slide the, uh, the, the this glutagabergic neuron here. I can see, I hope all of you from the online also can see this cursor. So this is the uh, gabergic neuron which generally inhibits thalamus. But what happened in Parkinson's disease, this gabergic inhibition, this gabergic inhibition generally increased due to, first of all, the direct pathway that is by the D1 stimulation here. The, it was inhibited due to some uh, uh, decay in the corpus triatum. And apart from that, as there is some problem, the issue happened in the indirect pathway. So the subthalamic nucleus stimulation generally happens and that ultimately promotes that inhibiting uh, discharge from the gabergic neuron. And therefore the ultimate effect on thalamus becomes inhibitory and that causes the bradykinesia. And whatever drug we have that is mostly centric to dopaminergic system and these slides all we know different drugs but all the drugs that are available here we can see they are stimulating the dopaminergic system so restoring the dopaminergic tone in the stratum is it everything so delivery of dopamine there are different issues this stimulation of dopaminergic system may improve the motor function, but this delivery of dopamine to the extra subtrietal regions that leads to different types of adverse effect. And there is obvious variability in their absorption and transition across the blood brain barrier, non physiological continuous release of dopamine. And also this only stimulation of dopaminergic system is related with different types of atrocities like cognitive defect, levodopa induced, dyskinesia, on off fluctuations, and some neuropsychiatric features we know that happens, and also the cognitive impairment and autonomic dysfunction, they are the non dopaminergic basis. So what is off? Off means return of motor or non motor symptoms, despite having treatment, there may be a delayed on also, that means delayed onset of medicine action, sometimes failed action, failed dose. That means we are giving dose, but that is completely ineffective. And returning of symptoms before the next dose. So that is the wearing off. And this is the pathophysiology. We can see from starting, if we go, the effect of levodopa is decreasing. And not only the effect of levodopa is decreasing, the dyskinesia threshold that is also coming down. So that is lead to different types of side effects, specifically the dyskinesia. Apart from that, also we can see the duration of action of that levodopa 
is going shorter and shorter as the disease is progr progressing. So there is something beyond levodopa. And one of the most important part is that another neurotransmitter that acts as a break in the system of indirect pathway that is adenosine. So only stimulating dopamine is not the ideal or appropriate way. We need to also take care of this adenosine. Otherwise, the proper accelerator will not act. So in this way, we can see how in, ca in case of Parkinson's disease, this adenosine receptor upregulation happened. And to block that adenosine receptor, specifically that A2A receptor, we had a new drug that is approved by USFDA, that is estradiophilin. And in this be beautiful diagram, that PET imaging, we can see how the A, B means, A means control, B means the Parkinson's disease brain, when C means the estradiophilin group, that is 20 milligram group, and D means the 40 milligram group. So here we can see the occupancy of the adenosine A2A receptor by estradiophilin. So this is why the FDA approved this drug. And another important drug that is opicapone, that is a long acting COMT inhibitor. And 2020 April, it got approval from USA. What is uh, specific for this drug? It, it is a long acting drug, not like our entecapone. Apart from that, the cytotoxicity, we know the withdrawal, the reason of withdrawal of tolcapone, the hepatotoxicity. The comparative cytotoxicity is much lower in case of opicapone. This is a picture we all know, the magic water lilies, the effect which was used by ancient uh, civilizations like Mayas and uh, Egyptians for different neuropsychiatric problem. And now we can see the very recently approved sublingual delivery of epomorphine, which generally used for on-demand of episodes. And there are very important features of this group of drug. They also, not only the potent dopamine receptor agonist in all form of D, that is D1 to D5, but also stimulate the postsynaptic D2 receptor. Apart from that, it has an antagonistic property on specific serotonin receptors and also a agonist property at serotonergic 5-HT1 receptor. And for that, it is much lesser, it produce much lesser complications in terms of neuropsychiatric disease. Uh, for scarcity of time, this is one case report which was very uh, recently seen in USA because sublingual apomorphine is there. One injection after uh, 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 this is a sublingual, the patient was on sublingual apomorphine. So 78 year male now attend emergency with vomiting. So one injection given in the emergency IV and the patient developed severe hypotension admitted in critical care unit. So name the injection. May I request any of our floor uh, from the floor may volunteer, which injection can be this, which uh, produce severe hypotension and lead the patient to admit in CCU? Any guess? The patient having vomiting and for vomiting attending emergency room and some injection was given. The medication history is patient was on apomorphine sublingual. So any guess? So actually the patient was given at the emergency, the ondansetron, 8 milligram IV stat. And this is a contraindication, absolute contraindication. Because concomitant use of serotonin antagonist, 5-HT3 antagonist may lead to severe hypotension. And this drug is not available in India, thiobenzamide, but in US it is available. And they, the, all the trials consist this particular drug, thiobenzamide, uh, uh, they reduce this 
vomiting that is induced by apomorphin but in india we can choose domperidone so this is the natural progress we can see of apomorphin which is a quite a uh, older drug than levodopa and 2019 in india we got apomorphin but it is not sublingual form it is an injection apo apomorphin generally given subcutaneous route and there are uh, continuous subcutaneous uh, injection also that is available in india what is important that dyskinesia reduction is there and markedly they reduce the daily off time this is a nutshell in all the trials that includes apomorphin uh, subcutaneously we can see almost 50% reduction in the off time so what are the good effects of apomorphin in non motor symptoms the thing is that it has some anti psychotic effect because it is a 5h to 2a antagonist apart from that we all know all the dopaminergic therapy has a common side effect that they increase that impulse control disorder and this impulse control disorder is generally due to that d3 stimulation but it has a lower d3 to d2 ratio compared to other group of drugs like pramipexol or ropinirole apart from that they have some role in the ne neurodegenerative process they reduce the amyloid beta protein and improve short term memory in murine models and possible benefit in the sleep dysfunction neuropsychiatric symptoms urinary dysfunction mood and gi disorder so this is a real world evidences in indian setting 29 patients we can see the effect good effect of this there are some image we, we can see sometimes it happens when continuous subcutaneous apomorphin injection was given this is the brand name i am not going in details another drug that is pimavanserin which is an atypical antipsychotic drug they generally induce not induce the significant antagonism to dopaminergic adrenergic histaminergic and muscarinic receptor and that is why fda approved this drug for the treatment of hallucination in the parkinson's disease associated psychosis these two drugs approved in india safinamide and droxidopa safinamide generally a reversible mau b inhibitor and we can use it at 50 to 100 mg per day i mean sir yeah i i the samaj yes sir yes sir sure sir the thing is that sir two two can i take two minutes sir two minute so drop okay sir so droxidopa one thing is important it can be used for neurogenic orthostatic hypotension in parkinson's disease patient but the thing is that we should go by the label this is a prescription of neurologist only these are these are the drugs which are coming duopa that is a enteral suspension and inhaler they are coming uh, i am not going in details of these drugs just i am focusing in this area that how to modulate the disease modifying agent and these are the area where we can target this alpha synuclein is a very important molecule and for that this picture if we need to understand that can help i am i am taking only 30 second that to explain this diagram because this alpha synuclein synthesis if we can stop that is an area where we can target if we can not stop that that i alpha synuclein can get aggregate and which can influence the mitochondrial dysfunction apart from that if we have some agent which can increase the clearance through the ly lysosome autophagy system that also can be helpful and another emerging area is immunotherapy because it is seen that this transmission is like like the prion diseases this alpha synuclein can go from one cell to another cell so if we have immunosuppression immunotherapies that can follow yeah so i can stop here because this is the picture we can see this is the future of parkinson's disease there are lots of agents are in the pipeline you can see from phase 1 to phase 3 so generally what i want to focus every even now the maximum drugs that is in pipeline they are targeting the dopaminergic system but we need more research on the area 
how we can modify the disease and with that i just want to thank you all uh, the discussion was not done regarding divide, different devices this is the fish which is very important i think that is zebra fish because the sacrificing this fish and research re with this type of fish actually help us to get different anti parkinsonian drug so i thank this fish and i thank that uh, august uh, audience and specifically the indian college of physicians west bengal chapter for giving me this opportunity thank you thank you very much